SpaceX delivered a fresh crew to the International Space Station on Saturday, making the trip in a quick 15 hours. The four US, Russian and Japanese astronauts pulled up in their SpaceX capsule after launching from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. According to Associated Press they will spend at least six months at the orbiting lab, swapping places with colleagues up there since March. SpaceX will bring those four back as early as Wednesday. Moving in are NASA's Zena Cardman and Mike Fink, Japan's Kamiya Yui and Russia's Oleg Platonov, each of whom had been originally assigned to other missions. Hello, Space Station. Fink radioed as soon as the capsule docked high above the South Pacific. Cardman and another astronaut were pulled from a SpaceX flight last year to make room for NASA's two stuck astronauts, Boeing Starliner test pilots Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, whose space station stay went from one week to more than nine months. Fink and Yui had been training for the next Starliner mission. But with Starliner grounded by thruster and other problems until 2026, the two switched to SpaceX. Platonov was bumped from the Soyuz launch lineup a couple of years ago because of an undisclosed illness. Their arrival temporarily puts the space station population at 11. It was such an unbelievably beautiful sight to see the space station come into our view for the first time, Cardman said once on board. While their taxi flight was speedy by US standards, the Russians hold the record for the fastest trip to the space station, a lightning fast three hours. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, everybody on the ground from the International Space Station. And uh, Endeavour crew, welcome on board. Yokoso, Dabro Pajalabach. And we are so happy and excited to see your smiling faces. And uh, Zina, Oleg, congratulations on your first space flight. We are looking forward to hearing your impressions and your feelings about that. And Mike and Kimia, welcome back. This has been the absolute journey of a lifetime. We are so incredibly grateful to be here. Thank you so much for this warm welcome. It was such an unbelievably beautiful sight to see the space station come into our view for the first time, especially with these wonderful crewmates. Oleg and I, both for the first time, and of course, Mike and Kimia-san, have so much experience that they bring to this team. With deep gratitude to everyone who got us ready for this moment, thank you so much. We're happy to join you and uh, we will uh, do our best to help the 73 crew who's uh, on Crew 10 to get home safely. Your friends and family are waiting for you. In the meantime, this is a beautiful space station and it's so good to be back and we're here to, uh, to take good care of it and help do our very best. I'm so grateful to be here. Uh, we have great uh, crew, 11 crew members and also this expedition members. Yeah, I'm very looking forward to working with them and make this uh, expedition 73 the best. I work hard. Thank you. I would like to say thank you very much so for so warm meeting and I believe and I hope we will uh, have incredible and unbelievable time on board. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Two U.S. Senators, one Democrat and one Republican, have introduced a bill proposing more than $50 billion in aid to Ukraine over the next two years. The Hill reported on this. The move comes as Russian President Vladimir Putin rejects calls from U.S. President Donald Trump to end the war of aggression. The bill was introduced by Senators Gene Shaheen and Lisa Murkowski. Their proposal includes $30 billion in direct military assistance through 2027, as well as $3 billion in foreign military financing over the next two fiscal years. Additionally, the bill expands the U.S. President's authority to reduce arms from $100 million to $6 billion annually for supplying weapons to Ukraine from Pentagon stockpiles. It is noted that a significant portion of the potential funds was also allocated to developing defense production within the United States. The bill aims to provide President Trump with additional tools to pressure Putin into negotiations by strengthening Ukraine's military capabilities to counter Russian attacks. The legislation includes $600 million to support Ukrainian law enforcement and anti-corruption programs, as well as $50 million for prosecuting war crimes. Among other provisions, 
The bill includes using profits from frozen Russian assets and the transfer of seized illegal weapons. Additionally, it proposes allocating $1 billion for a trilateral UAV initiative between the US, Ukraine, and Taiwan. This initiative involves joint research, development, and production of drones, as well as studying lessons from the Russian-Ukrainian war. This bipartisan bill is a win for America. It supports our defense industrial base, American manufacturers, and workers, all while U.S. military personnel learn from Ukrainian innovations on the battlefield," Shaheen said. The bill comes after the U.S. Senate Committee on Appropriations introduced a defense funding bill on Thursday that includes $800 million in military aid for Ukraine. The United States Senate has approved defense spending for 2026, which includes funding for military assistance to Ukraine. The draft budget provides for the allocation of $800 million for the Ukraine Security Initiative, $225 million for the Baltic Security Initiative, and $119 million for other projects related to European security. At the same time, it is worth noting that the relevant bill adopted by the House of Representatives did not contain provisions on financing Ukraine. However, an attempt to introduce an amendment that would completely prohibit the allocation of funds to support Ukraine was not supported. It has not yet been specified which programs for Ukraine the planned funding will be distributed to. It should be noted that the change in the U.S. government's position on Ukraine is also reflected in new approaches to priorities in the field of defense supplies. Another important step regarding Ukraine was taken by the U.S. Department of Defense. The department signed a huge $3.5 billion contract with Raytheon to produce medium-range Amram air-to-air missiles. Under the contract, the missiles will be delivered to several countries, including Japan, Canada, Germany, the United Kingdom and Ukraine. The contract is reported to demonstrate the continued global demand for the combat-proven Amram missile, a primary air superiority weapon for more than 30 years. According to press reports, the AMROM system is currently integrated with 14 platforms and is used in 44 countries around the world, demonstrating high effectiveness in air-to-air -air and surface-to-air operations. Its proven capabilities in active conflict zones increase its strategic importance to U.S. and allied defense forces.